now this is funny but seriously there are some things you have to do in china to survive okay you might be asking why did you choose china why are you in china See sincerely they are jobs okay they are jobs but those jobs don't pay as much okay so you can work in a company and they are very competitive okay they are, because you know china has a whole population do you understand and all the skills that chinese people need they almost have all the skills you know so the jobs here that they need foreigners is because maybe for you know a second language or a third language such positions where they need people with um, language skills or extra like international relations skills because it's an international company that deals with maybe international clients that's when they need foreigners and mostly some of them exist even part of it taken by chinese people who have lived outside and can speak you know certain foreign languages but they still this they still take some foreign there's some foreigners into such jobs okay maybe because they want to train you and then later operate in a certain region where the company is operating so you can easily get a job in a company like that okay but the truth of the matter is that those companies don't pay much because they know that this is a competitive market okay now for most of us who stay in china and work in china most of us are into teaching okay i am a teacher okay and I am no way, you know, shy about teaching. Actually, when I began teaching, I didn't really like it. I was doing it for the money. I'm still doing it for the money anyways. But now I enjoy it more than I used to enjoy teaching, okay? Now, if you teach in China, most most of foreigners who teach in China are teaching English language. Some of them are teaching other subjects, but in English language. So there are people who are teaching math, but in English language in international schools, okay? And there are some people who are teaching science in international schools who are teaching in English. The challenge with teaching English is that English teaching visas are limited to people from native countries. And there are only eight native countries that China recognizes. UK, um, the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa. If you are not from any of these two countries and you are employed as an English teacher, you would be probably working with a work visa but that is not a teaching work visa so the police can arrest you for teaching because your visa probably says that oh this guy is an operations officer or this guy is this or this guy is this but you're teaching which is still illegal but i'm telling you about 90 uh about 80 percent of us teaching we teach with a work visa which is kind of illegal you know if the police can arrest you for doing that but it doesn't usually happen the truth is that most of us are not native speakers they claim native because you must be born in a country where english is their first language what they are saying is that you must own a passport of a country that that uses english as their first language okay now there are many other countries uh, with english as their first language but china doesn't recognize as english speaking countries okay now i teach english and mostly you can teach from as low as kindergarten to you know high school some people teach in the university i teach in a training center which is like churches in ghana every ghana there is the training center training centers everywhere because almost every parent who can afford to pay sends their kids to training centers training centers are like you know after school classes to learn a language okay training centers are not cheap okay actually education in general in china isn't cheap at all okay most schools are learning english from primary school okay but parents don't appreciate the english being taught in primary schools because they are being taught by chinese teachers who might speak a little bit of english but parents um, aim is to see their kids speak english like a native speaker so they bring their kids to their training centers so that they'll be taught by native speakers okay now talking about bringing their kids to the training centers so they can be taught by native speakers 
is one thing and actually being taught by native speakers is another thing that makes the whole thing you know a little bit difficult because if me i am not a native speaker but then i've been hired by a training center to come and teach kids whose parents expect a native speaker to teach their kid now parents are very you know fishy they are they are scrutinizing they are making sure they are getting their money's worth okay they are asking is this a native speaker where does she come from how long has she been teaching you know all those kind of things okay now i remember when i used to teach in other places and mostly i taught in like primary schools in those places parents don't care about um the english that kids are learning because mostly the the number of students in the class is really large and the time given to learn english is very little okay there are some schools that i went that i thought like for only 15 10 minutes per class parents didn't take that serious so parents took their kids to training centers and they expect more do you understand let me tell you there's ignorance in china chinese people think oh if she's white she must be from europe she must be from the uk she must be from canada she might be from you know new zealand australia you know but if you are dark they would ask where's she from Mm. she might be from the u.s because there are a lot of blacks in the u.s or oh she might be from the uk because there are a lot of blacks in the uk oh oh she might be from france because of world cup but f what shocks me is that parents expect foreign t black foreign teachers to be from france but don't they know that france speaks french like but anyway or she might be from Canada, okay? So you might be asking, Ellen, where do parents think you're from? I'm from Canada. I'm from Canada, okay? Now, this is funny, but seriously, there are some things you have to do in China to survive, okay? Now, why, you might be asking, why did you choose China? Why are you in China? Because we hear so much about Chinese government, you know, uh, not allowing religion and all those things uh, too strict uh, the communist party and all that sincerely if you are a foreigner you mind your business you would be safe in China you know how they say if you mind your business you'll be successful in your business mm -hmm. if you mind your business sit in your corner obey rules and regulation you would be safe just be careful don't offer information to anyone you meet just be some of these chinese people they come and they start chatting with you as if they are your friends they're just fishing for information some of chinese people can actually go report you to the police so that the police will come and interrogate you some of them don't like foreigners especially if you're black okay they, immediately they they hear you talk they, they start to guess your accent oh she's from sometimes they don't even want to hear you talk they just say oh fejo fejo means africa they, they don't if your skin is that my skin is very dark so when they see me oh why are you so dark you know, they can ask you why are you so dark or sometimes you know kids will be looking at you why she's so dark and parents say because she's been in the sun for so long like but these are some things that you have to ignore sometimes if it gets on your nerve you can diss them in your local language and nobody will understand at, at least you get something off your chest okay let me come to why i'm living here in china after all every bad thing i've said about china standard of living um cost of living is very low and standard standard of living is very high in china okay so if you live in a small town your rent would be very low between let's say 800 RMB to maybe as high as 2000 RMB depending on what you're looking for okay now most jobs give accommodation okay my job gave me accommodation i don't pay i don't pay anything at the end of the month okay for rent 
all i have to pay is my utilities okay i pay my water and i paid my i pay my electricity every month i pay my internet okay which is between 500 renminbi and depending on whether we are in winter or summer it might go a little higher because of you know because of air conditioning heating and everything okay now that 500 renminbi is a, a little close to a hundred dollars okay and my salary is quite like 20 times of that okay oh my God. so wow. i get to spend a lot of money on myself and save a lot of money okay it is in my opinion it's better than you know living in europe because from family members who live in europe it's not easy people people come here they they don't like how they are restricted sincerely I, I don't like how everything is so restricted you can go to the bank and spend about 30 minutes in the bank okay just you know going to deposit money or you know you go to the bank they scrutinize you so much collect your passports do you have this do you have this just cross checking everything to make sure you're not illegal like trying to fish something whether you've done something or you've you you have something to hide you know it's very common here and so these things are, these are the things that make living here difficult for people okay now i would rather be in this than to be in europe at the end i have nothing left and taxes here in china if you work your salary given to you is your net you, your company has paid taxes your company if you're lucky has given you accommodation even if you're extra lucky they've paid your utilities if you collect your money it's for you and your mouth alone your food most jobs find um, accommodation very close and trains are very convenient in China okay depending on where you live I should mention that and there are buses everywhere dd is very affordable taxis they call it dd like china's version of uber very affordable maybe like a 10 minutes drive like 14 yuan which is about like two dollars okay it's not expensive at all and living here you can save so much like you can literally live on thousand renminbi a month okay those stingy 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 people they can live on thousand renminbi a month and thousand renminbi a month is like living on 160 dollars a month like so i would rather be here save money and move on to my next step than quickly run off to europe just so i can feel like oh she's in europe so what china europe oh all of those places they are not you everywhere you go there's racism the difference between the racism here and the racism in europe is that they have enlightenment they have what we claim to be civilization but they still want to disrespect people of color okay but here in china let me say 60 percent of the people because the government controls the media here most of them really have never seen a black person before what they've seen in the media are usually you know those bad images perpetrated by western cultures against black africans or black people every movie that they've seen in in the u.s has to do with the black man being you know being the villain being the drug the drug you know dealer you know so that is their idea of a black man they haven't made or you know experienced black people for themselves to form an image except for what they've heard what they think it should be or what they think uh, black people represent according to what the media has shown them okay so for them most of most of them see you and they are utterly shocked because this is their first time of seeing a black person in their life okay so their stupidity is based on ignorance not based on pure hate okay 
you know when someone has not experienced something the decision or the the image they have in their mind is based on ignorance it's different from you living with a people okay and you have experienced the bad ones you've experienced the good ones but still try to you know put all of us in a box that's different okay these people half of them i'm not saying all of them of course racism should not be excused on any level okay i don't excuse anyone on racism whether you've seen a black person or you've not seen a black person before if you see me you look at me for too long i also look at you and you know say my mind but i'm just saying that it makes me feel a little tiny bit better because I, in my mind i'm like okay she's just stupid she's just ignorant about this so i cannot be too angry you know but if i'm in america and i'm being discriminated against you know because of my skin color that would be super 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 painful because i would know that it is purely based on hate and nothing like ignorance okay now this is where i'll end maybe i'll probably make a second video if there are certain things i didn't answer and you would like to know about it living in uh, about living in china any question you have i'll be glad to make a second video to answer your questions um about how to apply to universities in china how to you know get a job the opportunities in china and all these things okay see you in my next video and i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to leave your comments and like this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed see you in my next video bye, -bye guys